Hello and welcome to an Illustrator logo challenge. My name is Andrew Hockrattle. I will be your guide today. Today we're creating a modern logo. So if you can, go to the link down in the description, grab that starter file, and you can design along with me as we create a modern logo. You also can find links down there for one of our creative communities, for Discord, as well as a plethora of other resources that you can get engaged with. If you want more of these challenges, Check it out, links in the description. All right, let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Illustrator. And if you open that file that is in the description, you can see that we have this here. So our challenge today is a logo challenge and we will be creating a modern logo. And we're gonna use sleek type and simple shapes to create our own modern logo. It's gonna be a fun one. And what we're gonna do today, for me, I've been watching a show um, on HBO Max called, I think it's called Bloom, and it's about florists, and so I've just been in a flower zone. So today, we're creating a modern logo for a florist. Uh, it's gonna be a great time. We'll use some type and simple shape. So let's hop in right here, and the first thing that we're gonna do with this file open is we're gonna find some type but you might be a little distracted by these lines here. Uh, these are just here to help you find the middle, right? If you wanna align things, I put them on the source file so you can see them. If you wanna turn them off and you don't want them there, we can go to view, and then you can scroll all the way down here to guides, and then just hide guides, right? We got options, get those out of here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to start creating by using our type. We are gonna click on the type tool right here, and from here we are going to click and by clicking, it is going to make something called point type. Now there are two different kinds of type. We have point type, which you can see is starting here at this little dot and moving out to the right. But if we click and drag, it will be area type. And you see that it fills, but it has a box, right? Just a little knowledge for you. We'll delete that. We don't need it today. We can pretend like it doesn't exist. Um, what we're gonna be doing today is we're just gonna be using this type here. So let's delete that. And one more time, we're grabbing the type tool over on the corner. And then we are going to click, and there we go. It will type it out for us. So I am going to um, create our florist title name, and I'm going to call this Templeton Flowers. Uh, Templeton's my favorite character from Charlotte's Web. So we're gonna do Templeton, and let's do two different words. So we're gonna keep it here. And you can see right now that it is starting on the left and then typing to the right. Wherever that little dot is, uh, it is then going to the right. So start there and then to the right. So we want that to be in the center. So all we need to do is click up here on our paragraph to align it to the center. Now you can see that dot moves to the middle. And now as I type, it will actually type out from the middle, right? So I'm gonna type in Templeton. There we go. And I'm going to use Z here. Z is just the zoom tool. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and we're gonna zoom out a little bit. So Templeton is looking good, but there might be an easier way for me to play around with this type, right? We could do it all up here in the bar, but I do wanna have maybe a panel that I can use. So I can go to Window, come all the way down to Type down here at the bottom and just open the Character panel. Hotkey for that is Control T, super easy. So we're gonna find a font. And with a logo, it's really important. If you want something modern, we wanna do something that's called a sans serif. And if we click on this little button right here, it's going to bring up all of the fonts, literally all of the fonts that have ever existed. Now, uh, it's all the fonts that are on your system as well as the ones that are synced from Adobe fonts in the cloud. So we're gonna want a sans serif. And so what we can do is click right here on filters and you can see that a serif has these little pointies and it says serif when I hover over it. And if you look to the right, this is a slab serif. So we want a sans serif on the left here. And a sans serif, when we're working with a modern logo, sans serifs are great because they feel like they are um, now, they feel like they're clean, they feel like they're digital. And so, especially with a florist, I want it to feel a little more high end, but I don't want it to feel like wedding, right? Uh, Templeton Flowers, it's, it's, it's modern, it's edgy. We put like microchips in our arrangements. So we're gonna find a nice, Simple sans serif. And the great thing is with your text selected over here, we can simply scroll through and it will give us a live preview of what this type looks like. Now, the problem that I'm seeing here is I want this to be all caps, right? We always want big caps uh, when you're working on a modern logo. It's uh, When you're working with just a logo type of just the name, it's usually all caps. So we can click on this little burger menu right here and we're going to click on all caps and that will actually lock out this type so that it is always all caps. 
I'm gonna increase the size by clicking right here and then bringing this down. And now we can go in and see our filter is still selected. So we can scroll down and you'll see that it's actually just pulling over these. Uh, it is giving us that live preview. Now I do want something that's very simple, very modern, and I want something that's pointy. Ooh, Century Gothic looks good. So I'm gonna do Century Gothic here, and I'm actually going to do the bold version of, Sempre of Century Gothic, my goodness. So we have that locked in, and I'm going to hit S, or just use the scale tool, and I'm going to click and drag out. Now you see that type is getting stretched, we don't want that. So let's hold Shift, and from there, it is staying proportionate so that we can scale it out propor proportionally. My goodness, we're having some trouble with words today. So I'm going to click and drag using the selection tool right there. And from here, I can just copy and paste this um, because I'm going to want the word flowers underneath. So I'm gonna control C and then control V or I can go to edit copy and paste. Now we'll line this up in the middle here and you can see that purple line see that purple line kind of pop up that's showing me the alignment so those are called smart guides so i'm going to type in here flowers we probably want this to be a little bit smaller so i'm just going to hit s or grab the scale tool right here and we're going to click and drag this down and maybe we don't want it to be as bold we're going to do this in regular so grab the move tool again, and each time I'm going to that little black arrow, I'm just hitting V on my keyboard uh, so that it lines up very quickly. So let's drag this up here, and we can hold Shift to select both of these and then bring it down to the middle. Now, if I wanna make sure they are aligned to the middle, I can click and drag over both of them and then use the alignment tool up here to align to the center. And there we go, they are both aligned to the center. So that looks good for now. We'll do some augmentations uh, a little bit later in this lesson, but I'm gonna grab this and just throw it off to the side, right? I'm just clicking and dragging it off to the side. We don't need it right now because we're gonna get into the actual logo portion. And I wanna create this beautiful kind of bloom of a flower, and we're gonna do that using simple shapes, super easy. So we're going to grab the ellipse tool over here on the left. And for this, I'm actually gonna turn those guides back on. So we're gonna go to view, we're going to do guides and then show guides. So from here, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to click and drag. Now you can see as I click and drag, it's dragging out an oval. It's going every which way. We don't want that. So I'm going to hold alt or option and it's going to make that from the center. Now, again, I don't want it to be a weird oval. I want it to be a perfect circle. So I'm going to hold shift. And from there, I'm going to make a perfect circle and holding shift and alt or option together is going to make a perfect circle from the center. So I'm going to let go, and there we go. We have a black mark. Now, we wanna work in black and white usually when we're starting out to create a logo, and that way we can just make sure that all of the different pieces are looking good and it looks okay without the color, right? Maybe if we need to get it embroidered on a shirt. So very easily, we're gonna start making a flower by just using different combinations of this simple shape. I'm going to copy and paste again. I'm going to control C or go to edit, copy and edit, paste. And then we can click and drag and these smart guides are gonna help us so much, y'all. You can see there it is locking in on that perfect line and it is perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. We want it to be sitting right at the center of this other circle, right? So it's looking good. We're just stacking shapes here. So from here, I wanna use something and I'm gonna use something called rotate. And this is going to rotate with a copy because when I'm thinking about a, a, a flower, right? The bloom is really just a lot of circles, just a lot of circles all the way around. And as you try to work on a modern logo, think about it that way. Everything is made out of simple shapes. How can I create this using simple shapes? Petals are kind of just ovals or circles and we can run them around. So let's do that. We're gonna have this top selected and we're going to use our rotate tool over here or just hit R. Now, if we click and rotate and drag, it's not gonna do anything because it's a circle. But you see this green dot in the middle here? That green dot's very, very important because if we didn't have this green dot, then we wouldn't know where we are scaling from. So what we can do is we're going to hold Alt or Option and you can see those little dots pop up. See those little dots on my cursor right there? So we're going to hit Alt or Option, and we're gonna click right here on this anchor. Now watch what happens, just one click, holding Alt or Option, 
oh, we've scaled it because I picked the wrong tool. We want to use the rotate tool right here, R. And the rotate tool, same thing. We're going to hold Alt or Option, and we're just going to click down here on this anchor. Now you see it's starting to rotate. If I turn this preview on and off, you can see how much we're rotating by. And so I want to make sure that I have six copies. So we're going to do some math. Uh, a round circle has 360 degrees, and we want six, which means that we need to have 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So we need to rotate by 60 degrees each time, and you can see with that preview that it is moving it the perfect amount. So if we hit copy, it's going to make a copy of that shape. If we hit okay, it's just gonna move it. We want a copy. So we're gonna click on copy, and then we're going to go up here to object, transform, and transform again. All it's doing is telling Illustrator, take this shape, rotate it by this much on the same point, and when we hit transform again, it's gonna do another one. So you can actually hit control D, and it will keep doing that. So control D, control D, control D, and now we have all of these circles, but they're all black and we can't see anything, right? Um, and that's fine. We're gonna fix that right now. What we can do is we are going to select all of these and ooh, that actually looks really cool. So what we're gonna do with all of these selected is we're gonna add a stroke to kind of create that flower effect. So we're gonna double click over here and we're just gonna do a white stroke for now. So we're gonna double click there and just click and drag up to that white area right there. Boom. And so from here, we are going to incre increase the size of the stroke by selecting up there and just continuing to keep that going. So maybe we go up to eight. All right, and that's looking pretty good, right? We have those kind of petals that are flourishing out, but we've lost the center. We've lost our center. We need to regain our center. So what we can do is we're just gonna click on each of these holding shift, and we are going to group them together, hitting control G, or we can right click and hit group. And then we wanna send it backward. Right now, there is a circle in the back. You can see if I go into outlines mode, uh, there's a circle in the back right there. So we're going to right click, and then we are going to transform and send, oops, sorry, arrange, and then send to back. Now you can see we have the middle of our circle looking good, and it's working. Um, all right, we're getting there. Uh, I do wanna say hi to our live chat. Uh, hello, uh, Justin's here, Jack's here, Umicorn. If you ever have questions in live chat, drop them in there and we'll answer them at the end of the stream. If you're watching this on replay, you're missing out. Uh, we have live content for you at behance.net slash live every single day. And if you want to join one of those live streams or see other videos, again, you can see the link down in the description um, for all of those challenges that you may have missed. So let's hop back in and finish up our logo, our modern logo here. So we're going to zoom out and we're going to do that one more time. I think that we need one more round of blooms here. So I'm going to grab this circle and I'm going to click and drag. And this time, instead of moving it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag holding Alt or Option. Alt or Option. You can see I have the two little arrows pop up. That's going to make a copy, right? That's really important. Um, and so we're gonna do that right there. And we have someone in the chat asking, uh, what is the shortcut for making it from the center? So if we're making a circle from the center, we're gonna grab our ellipse tool and we're gonna click and drag and we're just gonna hit Alt or Option. So Alt or Option is from the center. It will change it to the center. So hold Alt or Option, and I'm also holding Shift, and it will keep it perfectly proportionate like that, right? Uh, so perfect. All right, so we do have this at the front. We just had that problem, so let's fix it on the front end. We are going to right click, arrange, and send to back. There we go. It is sent all the way to the back, and that is what we want. Now let's go ahead and see if we can get some more petals going here, see if we can make that look great. And this time we are going to select this object and we're gonna to wanna to rotate from this point right here. And you can see that we have our rotate tool. We're going to hit Alt or Option, remember to get those little dots, and then click. And this time we want 30 degrees, maybe. Let me make sure. Mm, let's do 30 degrees and see if we can get some more petals. So I'm gonna rotate by 30 degrees this time and just hit our preview, and we are going to hit copy. So we're gonna hit copy, and remember we learned that hotkey that is, oh, I have actually done this wrong. 
We didn't want to go from right here. We want it to go around the center. So I actually rotated from the wrong place and I just hit control Z to undo that because we need to fix the way that we do it. So we have right here, our shape. We're going to grab the rotate tool. We're going to hold alter option. And this time we're rotating from the center. That's what we want. We want it going all the way around. And you can see that 60 degrees is too much. So I'm going to do 30 degrees and make some extra pedals. Now we're going to hit copy once and in our memories, okay, pretend you're illustrator. We've just told illustrator, take this shape, lock it into this point and rotate it by this much, right? And so what's great is with this selected, we can use that hotkey or we can use object transform, transform again. And we're telling illustrator, Hey, remember all those things you did? Just do them one more time. But this time, since our new shape is selected, it's going to move that one. So right there. And my favorite thing to do is once you have it so that it's rotating, it's moving by all the same amounts, use that hot hotkey control D and watch this. You can just hold it down and it's just going to keep making <laughs> circles for you. I made too many. So I'm going to control D a little bit. It's just going to keep rotating and keep doing that again and again and again. So we're going to zoom out here. And we can see that we've created this nice blossom. It is looking gorgeous. And we're going to go to a uh, window. Oh, sorry. We're going to go to view and just turn off those guides real quick. Look at that. We have a great logo. Um, it is looking pretty, pretty good if I do say so myself. And if we want more contrast, we can click and drag over this whole thing. And we're just going to increase the width of that line. So maybe we want it to be 14 to really get some definition in those pedals. Ooh, this is looking good. It's looking good. And what could be fun, right, is we could move these pedals around and maybe we want to select some of these pedals. So I'm going to select every other one. We're just going to hold shift and I'm going to go one, two, select, one, two, select. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring these forward. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to arrange and just say bring forward. Ooh, right. And so that's brought it. Uh, some of these are a little too far. This one went too far. So I'm going to right click, transform, or arrange and then send backward. There we go. We've got some variation. So using those different uh, heights, we can actually create some really cool uh, dimension here. So the hotkey for that is just control and a bracket. So the bracket on the right is going to bring it forward and the bracket on the left is going to send it backward. So I like where that is. It's not perfect. Everything, it feels like it has some dimension to it, which I love. So we're going to group this using right click group or just control G. And then I'm going to grab our scale tool and I'm just going to hit S and scale this down. Now, when I click and drag, I'm just holding the uh, shift button to move it up vertically. And I'm also uh, using V that hotkey to move things around. So now I can click and drag and bring our type all the way over here and we can align it right to the center. So if we want everything to the center, we can select all of it and just hit center right there. So it's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring our type up just a little bit. I'm going to hit S for the scale tool and just click and drag holding shift. A little bit, a little too big. Oops. Let's drag that down a little bit and that's looking pretty good. So I can click and drag over the whole thing and hit G control G to group it. And now I can scale the whole thing down. So that looks pretty good. And you can see that it is literally just simple shapes. It is only solely nothing else other than circles. Uh, if you want to see what your logo is created of, created out of, excuse me, you can hit control Y and look at that. It will show you all these different shapes, which that's really cool too. Uh, that looks really, really cool. So just control Y or command Y that will put it in there for you. So now that we've created one, I want to do one with color. So I'm going to use a rectangle here uh, and we're going to use, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's just make a copy of it. And again, we can control, uh, we can hit, sorry, click and then hit alt or option as we hold shift to drag in another copy. And from here, I want to do a color. And if we select it, you can see that everything selected is that black color. And all you have to do to change that color is double click. So we double click here and everything that's selected that is black is going to get updated with a color. Now let's do a nice kind of soft red pink. I think something like that would be nice. Let's go a little more red. Yeah, it looks good. So when we hit okay, it is going to update all of those pieces. Look at that. It is looking gorgeous. Now it is all grouped together. So if we want to ungroup it, you can right click, 
go to ungroup. And if we wanna change some of the colors in here, kind of have some variation, watch what we can do, is we've been using this black uh, selection tool, which is V, the entire time. Let's use this selection tool, which is A, the direct selection tool, and I'm just gonna grab a couple of these petals, kind of make it so that they're not ones that are touching. And you can see that I've just kind of grabbed and picked random petals here. So with those selected, I've used the direct selection tool. And I've clicked in the middle of each of those circles so you can see that they are selected. Now, if I would have used the black one, right, the black selection tool, it would have selected the whole thing because it's all a group. But if we use the direct selection tool, we can click around and kind of grab different pieces, different petals, and then we're going to take these petals and double click over here on the color, and I'm gonna make them just a little bit darker. So when we hit OK, it's going to change only the color of those petals. Oh my goodness, that's looking so good. Um, if I wanted to, I also could click here and I could hit I, which is the eyedropper tool, and we're going to select one of these and it will copy those colors over. So that's looking really, really good. Um, I actually love the asymmetry of it. Um, that's looking pretty fun. Let's do one down here as well, just using I or that eyedropper tool to copy those colors over. So that's looking really good, and I also wanna change flowers. Of course I wanna change flowers down here to that same color. Now here's the problem. If I grab the eyedropper tool and I click on it, it's gonna go away because it's putting a white stroke on it as well. Remember, our logo has a white stroke on it, um, and there will be other lessons that will show you how to get rid of that, but for now, we're just gonna use it on white. But what you can do is you can make sure that you have the color, the fill color in the foreground, and we're going to hold shift before we click, we're gonna grab the eyedropper tool, we're going to hold shift, and then we're going to click on this color, and it will sample only that color. So there we go, we don't have the stroke anymore, we just got that color, and I actually wanna reverse that, because I think that this should be that bold, bright color. Ooh, that looks great. So check that out. We have created a modern, sleek logo together. Um, again, we used Adobe Fonts, and then we created circles using that Rotate tool. Now remember, we did Alt and clicked with that Rotate tool. We did a little bit of math, and we can create something beautiful like a flower. This would be awesome for something like a lotus if you're doing a um, yoga studio. It's very, very simple to think about complex shapes with simple shapes, right? Build something super complex, with something very, very simple. Now, thanks for joining me for the Modern Logo Challenge. We'll be continuing these challenges and we'll have a whole bunch more. We have a ton of categories coming to you so that you can pick and choose what you want to learn. As always, you can click on those links down below in the description. There's one for Discord and that is where you will post your work. Over here, I also have the link on the screen for you, bit.ly slash AI Discord. And right here in our challenge tab, you can post your work. Regardless of when you're watching this, if you found it on YouTube a million years in the future, you can still post your work here. It's an awesome community um, for you to meet some people, get some feedback, and hopefully get some help. I'm super excited to see your logos. Um, if you followed along and just made a flower with us, that's awesome. If not, and you made your own thing, I definitely want to see it in Discord. Um, you also can check out more videos. There is a link down there to take you to a challenge page and that will show you all of the challenges. It, it felt like it needed the big booming voice. Um, all of the challenges are at that link down in the description. You can check it out, learn more, and you can even browse by category. So as more of these lessons happen, you'll see more categories coming through, but stick around, join us live someday. We're live every day, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time at behance.net slash Adobe Live, and I will see you for another lesson in Adobe Illustrator. Talk to you later. Bye.